Welcome to Misfit HQ. I'm Drew, that's Hunter, and we are here to talk to you about 23.2. We got burpee, pull-ups, we got shuttle runs, and then we have a one rep max thruster. Basically what we're gonna do here in this video is take you through each movement, potentially sprinkle in some on strategy. It's gonna be more about movement efficiency, and then we want you to head over to the podcast and check that out for the overall strategy. The warm-up is already on Instagram, so you can head there and check that out. So Hunter, let's head over to the burpee pull-up. The strategy uh, sprinkling that we'll have on the burpee pull-up is this is the movement that we really need to stay moving on no matter what. The other one, you're sort of just gonna be naturally moving the whole time, whether you're going fast or you're going slow. So when it comes to this movement, we really have to make sure that we are not stopping. So the big question across all levels is the whole strict versus kipping you are going to jump into a pull-up and go through, sort of finish as a strict pull-up as long as you can without stopping. That barrier there is just going to be, man, I can't do this anymore. That is when you can switch to creating a little bit more momentum. But the fact is that is going to create a ton more time, ton more time under tension. It's not gonna be great. So basically what we wanna look at here with movement efficiency is Hunter is going to start with his feet on the line. It's really important that you guys have some sort of visual cue for where your feet are gonna go on this. A lot of people would think that they would wanna jump their hands back to that line. We do not want that. Hunter in a natural burpee here is just gonna sort of sprawl out and you're gonna notice that his hands are going to be in front of that line. Then as he steps back up, he is going to end up on that line there and he can get into that position, you know, sort of like we're catching a power clean or going overhead with a push press where he can start moving right away and use that momentum from the floor to take him into the pull-up. So from that position right there, he's gonna sort of start his jump and then look up. What we don't want is for him to basically stand all the way up, crane his neck way back and get into that sort of position. We wanna be able to use the momentum of the jump to pull us straight into that pull-up and not get into really, you know, sort of eking out those reps. So again, he's on the line here. You can step back if that's a good pacer for you, but what we don't want to do is crush your upper body to the point with that negative that you're not going to be able to finish those pull-ups the whole time. So we're looking for a bit more of a sprawl here. We're going to step up back to that line, and then we are going to start that jump even though we haven't started looking yet. Um, can you give me two reps real quick, just sort of at game speed? He's, again, really using that momentum from that dip position to then jump up into. Very good. All right, anything else, Hunter, on the burpee pull-ups? Uh, I would say once you get your chin up over the bar, you don't get credit for lowering yourself down. So once that chin's broken the plane, I would just let go, land, and you're ready to go into your next burpee. Absolutely. All right, so shuttle runs. Stay moving. That is number one. We know that we have to stay moving on this, and that's gonna need to have some sort of speed to it, and that's gonna be more challenging than your shuttle runs in a lot of ways. So if that's the case, if it takes more energy to do burpees, then we have to slow down a little bit on our shuttle runs, but we cannot stop moving. So Hunter is behind the line. He's finished his burpee pull-ups. He is heading in this direction. Really important that he's running in a straight line. We actually do see a decent amount of athletes not running a straight line. Make sure you have some sort of cue to point you in the right direction. So as he's running here, you're gonna notice that he is getting nice and turned. He's getting that 180 in and having his, you know, his hips sort of facing in the right direction. You can stop for a sec. I don't want to make him do too many more. He did just finish the workout. You haven't, you look like you were having fun. He, you went right back into fitness robot mode. He was ready. He could have done another, another few rounds. So again, we are running in that straight line. We're making sure that we are turning behind the line there. And then one really good point that Hunter made right before we started this video is just the idea that we see people get so tired and just milk those turns. You need to go down to the end, turn around, and then decide how fast you're gonna run back in each direction. But there can be so much extra time spent on the turnarounds and we cannot have that within this workout. The only other thing that we're gonna bring up with this is just pay attention to the direction that you're turning in and the foot that you're stepping down or up with on the burpee. Some people within these two movements specifically do get some lower back pump. And if we are staying on one side the whole time, we can start to favor one side and then we're gonna get that low back pump that we do not want. All right, onto the thruster. I'm guessing you probably want a little bit less weight on the barbell for this. So with the thruster, um, in terms of strategy, again, we're gonna open up at, you know, this, this is from the warm up video that we have on Instagram. 
So make sure you check that out. But we are going to open up with a weight that is just below the weight that we warmed all the way up to. Um, I did notice, um, you know, in terms of like the announcement and everything and what they had on there, that they went a little bit conservative for their strength. Probably the biggest thing that you're gonna have to worry about within this is making sure that you're getting that lockout for most athletes after this workout. That's gonna be the thing other than your gas tank that's going to be fatigued the most. Um, so you don't have to worry about starting at like a super, super lightweight. Pretty good chance you're gonna get three to six would be a lot of reps. Six would be a lot of attempts to get in. Um, and we just don't wanna waste that time. So I'm gonna have Hunter do a rep for us here. So go ahead and give me a thruster from the floor. I want you guys to watch his front rack position. Great. So Hunter's front rack position. We have that, that really nice externally rotated shoulder. We trace from the hand down into the elbow and then back into the shoulder. One of the things that we see a lot within the thruster is an athlete's coming up. So if we're at that profile view and we're just about to finish, we see that hip extension forward. We don't see that knee open. And then as we get into more of that standing bench press, we see the internal rotation of the shoulders. And that's when you feel great and it just stops. It just, just starts to levitate just above your head and it's not going anywhere. So again, one more time, Hunter, watch that front rack position and watch him carry that out through the press. No internal rotation through that press. Very good. So many of you are going to want to rush this. You're going to do the workout. You're going to be gassed. Certain muscle groups are going to be pumped out a little bit. You're going to try to rush the movement. And for a lot of you, your thruster is not going to be that close to that squat clean weight that you can do really well. So make sure that you are not yanking the barbell off the floor because that position that we really need to get into in the bottom of the squat needs to be perfect so that we can use the squat to go up overhead. You see a lot of athletes jerk the bar from the floor. Then we get that over pull and you get buried in the bottom and the squat isn't as fast as you want. So if you're on the stronger side and this clean doesn't really mean much to you, slow that pull down and make it almost like technique work and then really get aggressive as you pull under the bar and go up overhead. Anything else? Your thruster is gonna be way less than your squat clean. So in your warm up, make sure that you feel really good about where that bar is landing on your shoulders in the bottom of that squat. If it's forward in your clean, it's obviously gonna be forward out in front of you in the thruster. So make sure you really like where that bar is landing in the front rack, because it's gonna be way less than you can actually squat clean. Movement or the bar placement's good on your shoulders. It'll probably go overhead. 23.2, no standing around season. Then you get to toss a barbell around a little bit. Remember, we have a full podcast with warm up and tips and tricks and all that good stuff. Make sure you go check that out. Good luck.